Questions? Yeah, go straight to questions. All right, questions. Again, if you could quickly just say who you are, where you're from, that would help us all out. Thanks. Earl? Earl Reese from the Sports Show. Yes. Hi. Hey, Earl. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, uh, four transfers in and two freshmen <clears throat> coming in. Six people so far. Uh, what, if anything, has surprised you thus far with, with the new people coming in? Well, no, I mean, nothing has surprised me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's been, um, I really love this group. Um, you know, we've been together all summer, um, individual workouts, practices, spending time with each other, breakfast, lunch, dinners, <laughs> um, just spending, you know, and one of the things that I always, I tell everybody, you know, in order to play for me, like the, the biggest thing for me is relationships. And you can't play for me unless you know me, and, and, and I can't coach you unless I know you. So the only way that you can know me and I can get to know you is for us to spend a ton of time together. And that's what we've been doing. It's just spending a lot of time together, just getting to know each other and um, building those relationships. And when you have relationships, the building the chemistry part on the basketball court is the easy part. Andrew Jones, Tari Illustrated. Yep. Two of the guys that you brought in from the portal, you game plan for last year, Cormac and Jalen. So in watching them, now that you have them, and had a chance to see their full bag, what do, what do you think about their games? Are they a little bit different than what you game plan for last year? Well, I like what, what's in their bag from a, from a basketball standpoint. You know, when you're talking about, you know, Cormac, his ability to um, shoot the basketball, be able to score, um, he's also a playmaker. He's a guy that can make plays off the bounce, and um, he's a basketball player. Um, he's an incredible defender, a guy that competes on the defensive end. And probably the, the biggest area that I didn't know, and, I, and really I shouldn't know because I wasn't his coach, is what kind of leader he is. He's a gatherer. I mean, he just is um, a vocal leader um, in the locker room, on the court, off the court and just brings teammates together. And, you know, with him, this being his last year in college, you know, there's a sense of urgency in him for this thing to work out. And um, it's just been great being around him and being coaching him this summer. And then, you know, Jalen Withers, he's somebody that I, that I like even coming out of high school. Uh, I've always been a big fan of his. Uh, one of the things that, that and you can even ask the assistant coaches every time that we play Louisville, um, the one person I was worried about was was him because of his size and his athleticism. You know, he could score inside, he can run the floor, he can rebound, he can shoot the ball from three, shot 40% from three last year. Defensively, he can guard one through five. I think it was two years ago, my first year as a head coach when we were at Louisville. <clears throat> RJ had a wide open layup to score the yeah, to win the game, and I don't know where he came from, but he blocked the shot and went into overtime. Mm -hmm. And so, um, just having him around and his personality, he's just such a team guy, um, always laughing, always wanting to have fun. And so, having those two personalities and the combination of their game is something that I'm really excited about. You were, uh, Aaron Beard, <coughs> how, how do you envision the retooling of the roster? What do you think you'll Maybe, I know it's a little bit of projection until yeah. they actually get on the court, but what do you think this group maybe will be able to do better than last year because of how the roster looks different? Yeah, you know, I mean, we have been on the court together. I mean, we've had practices this summer, and we still have two more next week. And so um, <coughs> last uh, next week is the last week of summer school, so we'll have two practices next week. So we've spent time out there on the floor. You know, I think, I mean, there's, you know, a number of things that, you know, that we needed to address and get better from last year. You know, I thought last year we weren't a, a very good outside shooting team. I mean, there's 15 teams at ACC and we're 15 to three-point shooting percentage. And so I think that uh, the team that we have now, I think we're a better shooting team. Um, you know, I didn't think uh, last year we were very good in terms of, you know, ball movement and sharing the basketball out of 15 Teams in ACC were 14th in team assists. And so I feel like we have multiple playmakers now that not only can make plays for themselves, but also make plays for their teammates. And so um, I really like the mix and the combinations of this team. I know it's really early, but you know, there's a lot of versatility. And that's something that, um, that I'm really excited about. 
With you the were higher to, amount to, of uh, Can I follow up on that real quick? <coughs> to, to follow up on that, Adam Smith in South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To what Aaron was saying, sorry, you were. Um, to, to what Aaron was saying, what you, you, you answered there, like when you envision what you wanted to accomplish in the portal, yeah. maybe like when last season ended and you're having people leave and stuff like that, like has it worked out? The way you envisioned, I know it's sort of a case by case basis where you take a guy and you you know you're investigating other guys, yeah. but has it come to fruition the way you had hoped it would with the overall group that you brought in? I did, you know, like you know, I, I guess at the beginning of the summer, you know, you know, you know where you wanted to be. You didn't know how necessarily you were going to get there, but you knew where you wanted to go <clears> and where you wanted to be, and now being here. The latter part of July, it's exactly where I where I wanted to be. I, I just, you know, personally for me, I, I'm just in a I'm in a great spot uh, for the team. We're in a great spot, and I just I, I like the makeup of this team, and I like where we are right now. I'm very happy with it. Jordan, uh, Jordan Kramer, CBS 17, kind of yeah. bouncing off of that with the higher amount of turnover that you all had this offseason. Did your approach at all to the portal change this year? No, I mean, not at all. You know, it's, you know, you know, one of the things that I think is different, I mean, well, th there's a number of things that are different in college basketball. Things have changed, obviously, when I play, and why are you laughing so much? <laughs> but a lot of things have changed in the two years, two and a half years that I've been head coach. I mean, you know, the transfer portal is real. I, I would characterize it more as free agency. Um, the extra COVID year, I think that's something that hasn't gotten a lot of, um, uh, I don't know what, you know, I don't think it's been talked about enough in terms of the impact that it's had on teams and programs. Um, <clears throat> NIL, the growth of NIL plays a huge factor. Uh, the involvement of agents. And I think also, you know, in relation to the players, um, you know, from the developmental standpoint, you know, the timeline of players has sped up dramatically. And that's been a difference. So, you know, those are just five examples where it's been changes or drastic tweaks and pivots and alters that allows us to have college basketball up to date. And so, you know, as a head coach and as a program, you really do have to have the ability to change, to tweak, to pivot, to alter. Uh, to be able to um, put a team together. You, you, you <coughs> learn things from all your experiences as you go along in life. I know you learned stuff your first year as a head coach. What did you learn last year from the experience that was different, obviously, from the first year? Well, you know, I talked about a couple things that, you know, I thought, you know, we struggled with, you know, in terms of shooting a basketball and also <coughs> consistently sharing the ball. You know, I think something that, you know, um, that we talked about, but we never – consistently did was, you know, I always talked about the discipline and the details and the small things that have to happen in order for big things to happen individually and as a team. You know, I think I think the stat is right, you know, of the 13 losses, 11 of them, it was a one possession game with three minutes to go. So we were either up by three or two or tied or down by two or three. And, you know, that comes down to discipline and details, getting a box out here, not turning the ball over here, making a free throw here, making a shot there, um, setting the screen here. And that's something that, um, you know, as a team, that we've just got to do a better job in this upcoming season. How about you personally as a coach? How, how did you learn and how did you grow from last year? Well, I, I'm always learning. You know, I've said to you guys before that, I'm always in a position of listening and learning. I, I've never, whether as a player or working for ESPN or as an assistant coach, have I ever feel like I've, I've got it, I've reached it. I've, I've always felt like you can always get better and always learn and um, I don't have any specific ways in terms of things that I learned from last year, but I know that I'm a better coach this year compared to last year because I've been doing it longer. And the more that you do it, the more you get more comfortable. You know, you recognize things that that you have done and uh, you like, and things that you know, I don't think I like that one. Let's 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 try this. And so that comes with experience, and um, that goes on a long way. When I said that I'm that I'm in a, a really good spot, and um, it's been a great summer for me as a coach, and um, 
I'm really excited about this upcoming season. Hey, you Brandon Hart from the Athletic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, you mentioned that kids. One of the changes you've noticed in two and a half years as head coach is timelines being sped up. Yep. You brought in a kid who was reclassifying. I know Elliot's age is a little bit different, but could you just sort of walk through the process of how that came to be and what made you comfortable with him as a player and as a person to be willing to take him a year earlier than anticipated? Well, one, we had an available scholarship. You know, I think that's a you know I think that's a huge piece. You know, um, you know in terms of Elliot, he was always in our conversation and recruitment of him is always. Um, being a part of the 24 class. And I know that, you know, his experience of playing for the Swedish national team, he played extremely well. Uh, ended up winning the championship, the Geico championship with uh, Link Academy. And it it changed his thinking of, of wanting um, to come here um, early. <clears throat> he also had a desire to want to be here. I mean, he's such a team guy, he just wants to win, wants to be a great teammate. Um, and that was the process in terms of him speeding up the process. And so um, I'm thankful <clears throat> that he's here at Carolina. It's been great, him, Zayden, the two freshmen coming in. And so that's how that all happened. And obviously, you know, having an available scholarship definitely helped as well. Hubert, uh, Michael Cook from WCHL. The, with all the newcomers, not only the transfers, but <coughs> the two freshmen, Elliot and Zayden, was there one Quality that you were searching for in all of them that sort of you know defines this new new incoming group as a whole. I don't think there was anything defining that I was looking for. I, I think overall in general, I you know with the the differences in college basketball now, what's important for me is guys that 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 want to be here and guys that want to be a part of a team and understand the importance of the name on the front of your jersey, that it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this program, to be a part of this team in this program. And it means something to run out of that tunnel and play on that floor. And, I, you, know, I, you know, I love, you know, you have to have individual goals. But um, I, I want guys that, that want to be a part of a team and want to be about the we not just about the me. And not that we didn't have that in the past, but that's in general for anyone. That's what Carolina's about. And I've always said this, you know, in order to be successful here, you have to love basketball, you have to love this place, and you also have to love your teammates. And if you check those three boxes, then you're gonna have a great chance to be successful here. And so not just this past summer, um, the two and a half years that I've been head coach, that's what I want kids to have. I want them to check all three of those boxes. Hubert, did you have to change your thinking with bringing Elliot in early? Because I remember not too long ago you were telling us, you know, you didn't like the reclass. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we were in here one day and you said, like, I, I might not ever do that again. Yeah. Um, did you have to change your thinking? Well, just like I said, you know, there's, you know, because of college basketball and where it is, you know, there's times that you're going to have to tweak and pivot and alter and change. And so, um, so yes, <laughs> but so, well, yes, but I mean, it, it, there were some great, long, straightforward and direct conversations in regards to that, you know, I mean, it's, you know, you know, this is not specific to Elliot. This is just specific in terms of just in, you know, to anyone. You know, you know, do you want to be a part of the team? Do you, why are you coming here? You know, why, why do you want to come early? Um, it's a big step. And, you know, one of the things that, um, for me, I, my senior year in high school, I, out of all the years of high school, and high school, high school, I don't really have any great memories, but I, I can remember my senior year. You know, it was a big deal getting my diploma in high school. It was a big deal my senior year for senior night in high school. It's, I, I remember that. And so um, I don't want guys to pass that up. I think, it's a, I think it's an important part of growth. It's not just growth as a player. It's growth as a person. And it has to be the right fit. So specifically in regards to Elliot, I felt like it was the right fit. Possibly, hang on one second. Possibly to clarify, or I may confuse things more, correct me. 
I think when he said he didn't want to do that again, weren't you talking more about like when Will Shaver came in in January? Yeah, well, in season. In mid season, I, as opposed yeah. to. I don't right. want to that again. I've never yeah. done. My bad. Okay, yeah. All right. I just yeah. wanted yeah. to. Yeah. That's, what, yeah. that's what we were talking about. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hubert, uh, Rod Baxley, Fable Observer. Yeah. Yeah. How would you describe the feelings and, and thought process in the days and weeks following the end of last season? Well, I know that, you know, we were disappointed, you know, going into last year, we had, you know, hopes and expectations and dreams <clears> of what we could become. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we just, you know, for a number of reasons, just didn't reach our full potential. So um, from that standpoint, that was disappointing. Um, but also, you know, you talked about learning, you know, I, I my time here at Carolina, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, I talk about it and how what an unbelievable and great experience that I, that I had here. Um, that being said, in my time here, there were, there were rainy and windy days. I, I, and, and there were a lot of them. There were some hard times. And the feeling that I have about this place is not just because of the sunny days. It's also about the perseverance through the rainy and windy days. And so it's a great opportunity to grow, great opportunity to learn, and I feel like that we're all in a great position to get better from last year and to improve upon that and have the type of season that, that, that we want and hope for. Now that you've had a chance to see Elliot in person for a bit, what do you like that you've seen from him? And how is he meshing with an older group? So yeah. how is he meshing with some of the older guys that he's going to be working with? Well, he is. I mean, he's, you know, him in Zayden and all the the transfers, it's it's come together really quickly. I mean, just the personalities just work together um, in the locker room and out there on the floor. Um, the chemistry is there, and I really like it. And there's a desire to be good from different directions, from the guys that were here last year and experienced two years ago and last year from the guys coming in as transfers and then Zayden and Elliott coming in as freshmen. And so there's a sense of urgency and a competitiveness and a drive that's coming from different directions, but all meeting in the same place. Um, you know, when you have leadership like RJ, when you have leadership like Armando that have been here before and have experienced the highs and lows, you know, they, they have done an unbelievable job of um, just um, creating team and um, getting the new guys, not just the freshmen, but also the transfers, um, just acclimated to what this program is about and, and, and what our team is going to be about. Did you, that, if I could follow on that, did that come naturally or did you have a talk with them? So no, that came naturally. That came naturally. It, it, it just did. Now, I... I said before, we spend a ton of time together. I mean, we, we just do. And, um, uh, but that wasn't something that I met with RJ or Armando or anybody about. This is something that they took personally for themselves um, to be leaders and to, to integrate the new guys with the old guys and, and just to create a, you know, really good team chemistry. And so, I'm really proud of RJ, I'm really proud of Armando, and this team is together because of those two guys. Hubert Lewis Lewis Rand is WRL. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the two of them. I think it's it's rare if not, you know, almost never happens to call it a basketball where you have two guys who have been here for so long, especially in Armando's case. Yeah. Um, how how difficult is it for do you think just for them to be the way you described after seeing the team change, after seeing so many different teams change over the course of their time here? Well, I mean, you know, you know, both of those guys, those they're both Carolina guys, and they love it here. You, um, it gives me hope that, you know, talented guys as much as they are have a de desire to still stay here <laughs> and to be here because they believe in this place and um, they love it here. And, you know, having guys like RJ and Armando and, you know, it, specifically for those two, even as an assistant coach, I was the one, the lead recruiter for them. So I've known them even longer. And so they have those type of relationships and 
to have them still here and having an opportunity to coach them and be around them every day is is a real blessing and an honor and it's something that you know a lot of coaches don't get an opportunity a chance to be able to experience. You like to follow up on Armando. He obviously, you mentioned the COVID year and how that maybe hasn't gotten the, the notoriety or the discussion, whatever that it warrants. Yeah. How are your conversations with him this year different from maybe they were this time, you know, in last April? And what did he sort of express to you as to the primary reasons why he did want to utilize that extra year? Well, you know, my, you know, conversation and communication with Armando has been straightforward and direct and the same since I first saw him play at 15 years old. But, you know, this is his last year. <laughs> <laughs> Are we sure about that? As of now. That's pretty good. This is our model. Tweet that out. Yeah. Last, last year. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. So, after this year, it's over. And. Armando, specifically for him, has experienced the highs and the lows. And what does he want his last year to look like? What does he want to remember when he leaves this place? And we've had a lot of talks about that. And the way that Armando has grown as a player, but more as an individual, and as a leader, has a thing that's just really impressed me the most about him and I'm impressed by a lot by him and um, but we've had a number of conversations that you know this is this year is huge for him even personally and that um, he has to do everything that he needs to do in order to put himself in a position where he can be his most to be the best that he can be and um, I'm really excited to see that type of I only have one year left mentality out there on the floor. Hubert, yeah, about eight or nine more minutes. Hubert, what kind of uh, growth this offseason have you seen from Seth and Jalen, and what did they say to you as to their reasoning for coming back for another year? Well, I mean, Jalen and Seth came back because they wanted to be here. They didn't want to go. <laughs> and so um, I love coaching them. I love being around them. Both of them are unbelievable kids. And, you know, Seth, he has, you know, athleticism that's not normal. And he can be, I think, the best defender in the country. I really do. I mean, his ability to pick up full court and keep the ball in front of him, I, I think he has that ability to be a problem on the defensive end. And, you know, with his speed and as at his athleticism, being able to attack the basket and get to the free throw line, and he's been really working hard all summer, um, shooting the ball from the outside and just becoming more consistent um, from three point range. Um, Jalen has he, he's basically lived in the locker room. I mean, in the in, in the weight room, he's been there all summer, and it's gotten to the point where both of <laughs> Both of his legs are, are equally um, um, strong, and um, he's really worked hard on his conditioning. He can really score around the basket. He can shoot, and both of these guys want to play a bigger role this year, and they have shown that by their preparation and by their, by their effort and uh, the way that they have worked this summer. This was Jalen's first like full no-holds-barred summer. In this was years. the first year where he can actually work out you know, the last two years, they were rehabs, yeah. rehab summers, and that's a big difference. This is the first year where he is working out. He's not rehabbing, he's working out, and that's a huge deal for him. And uh, being out on the floor and, you know, missing the instincts of just playing five on five, um, you know, it, it takes time to get that rhythm back. And I just, I just really like the way that he's really like the way he's playing. Yeah, Hubert, uh, I wanted to ask you about, if I'm not mistaken, you can have four coaches on the court now, right? <clears throat> the NCAA rule? Six. No, a fourth. Am I wrong about you that? You get two more on-court assistants. Yeah, you right. you're up to six now. Yeah. What are you, you going <laughs> <laughs> to do with that? 
And yeah. I mean, you know, also it seems like the in vogue thing in college basketball or is the GM role, general ma general manager type role in okay. college basketball. I'm not there. Okay. <laughs> well, why why aren't you there yet? Because some schools are, you know, you see the Dukes and the Villanovas and people yeah. like that going to a general manager. Well, I mean, for the two additional coaches, um, Pat Sullivan and Marcus Page, what I love about it is it gives them an opportunity to be out there on the floor. And so it gives, you know, more um, hands-on approach coaches that can do individual workouts, film work, all kinds of different stuff. And so um, from that standpoint, to have, you know, Pat Sullivan and Marcus Page on the floor with our players, I see that as just a major benefit for us in our program. Um, in terms of how that'll structure, in terms of practice and games, that'll all be the same. You know, I think it's important for me. Um, I, you guys know this. I, I I like limited noise, and so you know, even though there's more people on the floor, um, there has to be just one voice. And so, um, but I'm really happy with Pat and, and Marcus, and I'm really excited that they get an opportunity to be out there on the floor with our players. Hubert, you know, so. uh, um, Trey Scott, sorry, mm -hmm. we talked about our, uh, RJ's and Baycott's leadership, yeah. but the transfers you got, got coming in have played a lot of basketball. Yeah. How, how has that translated to practice? What have you been able to see from these guys that, you know, these are veterans that played ACC a lot of games? Yeah, you know, it, it's not just, um, you know, I mentioned Armando and RJ because they're the veterans of this program, but, you know, Cormac and Paxson and Harrison and uh, I call him Jay Witt because Jalen Washington and Jalen Withers. If I say Jalen, both of them look at me. If I say JW, both of them look at me. So I call Jay Witt, Jay Wash. Okay. So Jay Witt, um, all of these guys um, have been leaders and bring tremendous experience to the team. And so having that experience and that knowledge to come in from different places, I mean, it's just a huge benefit. You know, I talked about the leadership skills of of Cormac, but I've been blown away by Paxson. I mean, his his ability to gather teammates and um, bring guys together has been unbelievable. Like all these um, older guys, they'll take out Zayden and Elliot. Let's go to lunch. You know, very easily. Armando, being a fifth year senior. Nah, I'm not going to hang out with the younger guys. No, he's bringing them along for breakfast, lunch, come over to the house. And the biggest change for me, you know, with this team is you talked about, the, you know, our, our, our stuff planned. Like, it is not the gathering of this team has never been planned all summer. Like, they're always doing stuff together, cooking out at players' houses and um, going to the movies together. They went to the soccer game to see Chelsea and Wrexham last night. And so um, that's not just from RJ and Armando, but also from the leadership of the older guys that are coming in as transfers. Now, Jimmy, just, just to clarify, <clears throat> you don't anticipate hiring anybody else for those newly created roles. No. Sully and Marcus are going to slide in there. Yes, they are. And yes. Can, we, can we, on the GM, uh, just to follow up on that, like, is that something you're even considering? It is. It's something that I'm talking about and something that I'm considering um, in regards to the changing things in college basketball because there's a number of responsibilities that I have. Now you add on the transfer portal, the involvement of agents, NIL, that's a lot. And, you know, why I'm talking about it and thinking about it is making sure, um, because the most important thing is me being a basketball coach. But that is other parts of my job. And so it's something that I'm considering. It's something that I'm talking about. And um, that's where I'm at in terms of, of a GM. Thanks for clarifying yeah. that. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I don't have one as of now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It probably was a terrible wordly question. No, it wasn't. It was great. It's great. It's it's changing. It's just it's it's different. Uh, Jeremiah Holloway with Inside Carolina. Uh, I wanted to ask specifically about Marcus Page, who you all brought in this summer. Uh, of course, pre-existing relationship, former player. Uh, just what was that like? You know, bringing him on, and what what kind of how do you think he kind of fits with the coaching staff and what kind of impact do you think he'll have with the, among the team? Well, Marcus and I came in together. His freshman year is my first year as an assistant coach. And so um, 
Yeah, we're, <laughs> Some of us were here then, too. I know. A lot has changed in 12 years. And so, um, just my relationship with Marcus, is, you know, being one of his assistant coaches and just enjoying coaching him and being around him and, and, and knowing him for so many years. I know that, you know, he had a successful uh, professional career. Not only was, you know, he was great on the court, you know, you know, he was at the top in terms of academically and being a leader and uh, being that person off the court that represented not only our team, but our university and our program at the highest level. Why wouldn't you want to have a guy like that around every day, around our players? And so we had some discussions during um, last season that, you know, this might be his last year of playing professionally. And I told him, you know, I asked him, you know, what were you thinking about doing if you were, were to retire? And one of the things he said, he'd love to get into coaching. He'd love to come back here. And I said, okay. Well, I said, well, when you're serious about retiring, why don't you come back to me and talk to me? And so towards the end of the season, he was like, I'm serious. And I said, I'm serious too. And so we just continue to talk. And I just love having Marcus here. And um, he's, just a, he's just a great person. And the four years that he was a player, did he ever give off any kind of indication that he either could be a coach or had an interest in coaching? Was that ever teased at all? No, I mean, we never talked about it. You know, while he was a player here, did he ever want to become a coach? But he was an extension of Coach Williams out there on the floor. So, you know, he, you know, he, not only did he know what he wanted or needed to do out there on the court, he knew the responsibilities of everybody else out there on the floor. And so. He was an extension of Coach Williams. So him being a coach is not a far stretch um, for me thinking about his experience here as a player. Nobody's asking you about Harrison. You want to talk about Harrison? Yeah, I mean, Harrison, I just, um, you know, one of the things that I love is I love multiple playmakers. I just do. You know, I love having multiple guys out there on the floor that can make plays, that can um, not only facilitate, um, or make plays for themselves, but also facilitate for their teammates. And, you know, Harrison can definitely do that. He has tremendous size, versatility. He can play a number of different positions. He can handle the ball. He can pass. He can shoot. Um, he can post up. Um, he's really physical and can defend, um, whether it's in the post or out on the perimeter. And it's nice to have somebody with that size and that type of skill level and athleticism that, that can do a number of things out there on the floor. And so um, he was a big time player in the Pac-12 and for two years at Stanford and um, really excited that Harrison is here now. We've got time for the last two questions, Brian and then Adam. Yeah, Hubert, so building off Harrison, you guys recruited him out of high school initially yeah. with Paxson. I think his dad might have recruited Sean when he was still here. Yeah, uh, yeah it's played, all like a, Played against Jalen, yeah, played against yeah. Cormac. Like, do you, just in the changing nature of roster construction, do you have to keep your files longer, so to speak, on guys, just in case they come back <laughs> available a second time? I mean, <laughs> all, all of these different connections are no, sort of budget to your current team. Yeah. No, I think it's a great question. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I don't know how to answer that other than this. I I know that, you know, in the past you could you could predict what a team's gonna look like next year and the year after that and what it's gonna look like at this time and you could recruit in a way knowing that this person will be here or this person's gonna be gone. You can no longer do that. So you can hundred percent predict that you don't know what it's gonna look like from year to year. You just don't. And so um, you can have everybody staying or you can have some people leaving. You know, it, 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 it's a year-to-year -year basis. But one thing that I love is Carolina will always stay the same and the standard and, um, of this program and what this team and what this program is about. That will never change. Now, that's the question I have. All right, we're done. That's perfectly off. No, it goes off. Uh, uh, this is a... I thought we were done. I was yeah. serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some good uh, I thought stuff. I was asking you about Chelsea and Wrexham. <laughs> we, can, we can do that next. Um, yeah. I have a question from one of our, our recruiting guys. I'm actually going to read it to you. Uh, but it goes along those lines, and he, he was asking, with the increased attention, attention on roster management, how you have to sort of, you've got your targets, you've got your commits, you've got your signees, and you've got your current players, it seems like you have to just, recruit all the time, all of those guys, you're either recruiting them to come or recruiting them to stay. 
how do you try how have you tried to go about that and does the traditional Carolina message of what you can have here does that still resonate or do you have to adjust that with the, the changing times I do I think what what this place is always has been about will will be the message and, and it still does resonate I, ju I, I really do I think being a part of this program and this university and playing at the highest level from a basketball standpoint but also getting a high level education means something to kids it still does it still means a lot to kids it still means a lot to parents and it's important to me. It will always be important to me. And so the guys that come here, it's got to be important to them as well. But as I said before, you know, in this position, you, you're going to have to be able to tweak and to change and to pivot and to alter things. And you're right in terms of the recruiting standpoint, it comes from a different directions now. There's never a time where you're not recruiting. Um, since the time that we, you know, we lost to Virginia and uh, ACC tournament and that Sunday we found out we weren't going to be a part of the, you know, the NCAA tournament there has not been a day off not one the whole summer and so you were either recruiting your players recruiting transfers recruiting high school kids it's 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 always a process and so um, that's the nature of college basketball right now specifically being a head coach and I do it with joy and happiness. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.